Welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at an instrument that rattles. No, not this one. This one. Recently, a viewer of this channel wrote to ask if I could repair his 1960s era classical guitar. He told me that it needed new tuners, an easy fix, but also that it had a buzzing or rattling sound. He said the problem had been looked at by other repair techs, but that they had failed to discover the source of the buzz. I had no idea what to expect, but in a few days the guitar arrived at my door, and I began investigating. At first glance, everything looked alright. It looked to be in nice shape, and it had a very playable action. As soon as I began to play, however, the problems became obvious. There it is. That's not fret buzz, and that's not loose tuning machines. Something about this top is not only buzzing, but creaking too, almost like an old chair. I discovered that if you press on the top, it almost seems to groan. When I was a teenager first learning to work on cars, I learned a valuable lesson. An older man told me, fix the easiest, least expensive problem first. With that in mind, I felt the bridge would be the best place to start, and a loose bridge certainly could explain the buzzing, so I set about regluing it. Not wanting to spend a great deal of time repairing something that I wasn't sure was the source of the problem, I opted not to remove the entire bridge and only to glue the portion that was coming loose. I squeezed as much glue as I could get under the bridge and then clamped it down tight with my cam clamps. While the cam clamps are great, I like to also use these clothespins covered in tape as wedges. That helps get every last bit of pressure we can on the joint. I allowed the bridge to dry for a few days before restringing it. When I restrung the guitar, the bridge held tight to the top, but the buzz remained. Clearly we hadn't found the problem. The next most logical explanation would be a loose brace. So I put my inspection mirror inside and looked around, but nothing was loose enough for me to see. I felt each brace with my fingers as well, but I still couldn't locate the culprit. At this point I knew two things. One, the guitar creaks, and two, it was something to do with the top. The trouble is, the top had several issues. In addition to the loose brace I expected to find, it also had this lovely crack and this nice puncture wound here. Moreover, if I were to find the loose brace and fix it, the customer would still be left with a hole, a crack, and a bridge that has a habit of coming loose. Considering all of this, I contacted the customer, and together we decided the best course of action would be to remove the damaged top and build a brand new one. Now due to the time, cost, and labor, this is not something I would recommend to everyone, unless the guitar is of significant value. In this case, the guitar's sentimental value was significant enough that we decided it was worth pursuing the repair. Acoustic guitars are difficult to take apart because they're glued together. Wood glue is an incredible thing, really. It can create a bond stronger than the wood itself. Its weakness, however, is heat and moisture. That, my friends, is how we'll get in. To begin, we need an iron. My wife won't mind if we borrow this one. Since the fretboard covers the top, we need to remove it first. I start by placing the iron on top of the fretboard, allowing it to heat up the glue underneath. You'd be surprised how long you can let the iron sit before the glue begins to soften. As long as it's on top of the frets, you shouldn't have to worry about burning the fingerboard. When the glue begins to soften, you should be able to work the thin end of a putty knife in between the fretboard and the neck. To really get in that tight seam, I like to sharpen the blade on a belt sander. Even though the glue has been softened, I find it still requires some coaxing. A few taps of the knife handle with a small hammer provides the convincing it needs. It's a long process and you'll need to slowly work your way up and down the neck. As patient as I try to be, I could still probably slow down a little bit more and not try to muscle it quite so much. It's all too easy to work that putty knife under the surface of the neck and start taking out chunks you meant to leave in. After some time and a little more coaxing, the fretboard and the nut came free. Before doing anything else, I clean up the small pieces of the neck that remain stuck to the fretboard when it came loose. As I said, the glue can be so strong that the wood breaks first. That's both a blessing and a curse. It's going to be a while before we can re-glue the fretboard, 
so to keep it from warping, I clamp it against a straight beam. The next step in removing the top is to remove the binding. Fortunately, time and humidity has done some of that work for us. You can see where it's separated along the waist of the guitar. When I replace the binding, I'll be sure to put extra gluing pressure on that area. This guitar features edge binding and a purfling strip as well. Binding is the plastic that runs along the edge, while purfling sits in a second, more shallow ledge on the top. To begin, we need to loosen the glue with our iron, and then work the putty knife into the gap. Despite having already come loose at the waist, it was actually much harder to get the binding and purfling free than I anticipated. Another way I could have done this, and perhaps will next time, would have been to use the router to cut through all the old binding. While that would have removed it and left me with a nice clean channel, in this case I wasn't sure what I was going to find underneath, and I didn't want to do my exploring with a power tool. As I worked my way around, I discovered that the binding has a tendency to take pieces of the laminated sides with it. To prevent this from happening to the rest of the guitar, I used the flat part of my putty knife to apply pressure against the sides while I peeled the binding. I used to think binding was purely cosmetic, but it actually serves an important purpose. The binding protects the edges of the guitar from slight knocks and impacts, and also helps to bind the top and sides together. Some guitars that don't feature binding, like this Baby Taylor, are notorious for having their tops separate along the seam. I've already re-glued mine once. After all the binding was removed, I could just barely make out the line where the top and sides meet. After applying plenty of heat, I again worked the thin end of my putty knife in the gap and began to pry. This is something you really want to take your time with. Because I had no intention of reusing this top, I was able to be a little more aggressive with it. If I were planning on reusing this, I also would use a thicker towel to protect it from the iron. The main thing to think about when removing a guitar top is you want to heat up a section with your iron and then work the knife slowly around the edges to break up the glue. We're not really prying so much as scraping. Just like buttering toast, we want to scrape along that top edge to cut through the soft glue and break the joint. Some challenges you'll have to deal with are braces that are glued into the kerfing. You'll recognize these because you'll find your knife hits a wall and can't go any further. At that point, simply take out the knife and reinsert it about an inch or two from where you stopped. When all the glue has been broken, these braces will come loose fairly easily. One tricky part is the neck block. It extends a good way into the body and has a lot of gluing surface. Take your time here. It feels like it won't come loose, but with enough heat and patience, it will. The last thing to do is gently coax the edges of those recessed braces free. Here's where you can apply a little more force, and with some convincing, the top comes free. Inspecting the top reveals two things. One, it's a laminate construction. It looks like three thinner pieces were glued together. When we replace this, we'll use a solid cedar top, and the sound will be far richer and more resonant than it ever was before. The second thing of note is this brace here. With the top removed, it's very easy to see that it's come partially unglued. This was most likely the source of our buzzing and creaking. It may also have played a role in the top sinking, causing the bridge to come loose. The reason this was so hard to find is because it was directly behind a larger brace, both blocking our view and making it hard to reach with our hands. Nevertheless, the guitar will benefit greatly from the new top we're going to build. Stay tuned for the next video in this series, where I'll be building and installing the new top. And if you enjoyed this video, you'll probably also enjoy my video about repairing this 1958 Gibson, so be sure to check that one out as well. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.